Hey folks, Jonathan here. Bowler is at home. Uh, I was pretty confused about this thing, sort of. And I think I have got it figured out. Uh, these brackets never made any sense to me. How they were made. Well, what are you doing, Nina? So, uh, how they were made, the bars that were on them, why they were so long. And I just couldn't quite figure out what deal was on the on the bowler and uh you know these brackets uh i think they're quarter inch plate but they are just bent all to heck and you know i had to cut one off but it was the only one really in good shape but i can weld it back on but i'm debating on what to do because uh i didn't realize and didn't know how this boiler was actually set up or how it was supposed to be set up but now that I see it, I, I found a picture. I realized that this boiler was hanging. There was two I-beams or two beams that ran across the top and it hung from them instead of uh, like I thought and you know, it had a cradle underneath. Okay, so my plans are to have two foundations, one located here and one at the back of it and actually uh, build them, you know, round it out, whether it be concrete or if I build them out of steel and then concrete around them or something, and then uh, actually uh, set this boiler right down in it. And what I'd prefer to do, uh, of course, is clean this boiler up first, paint it black, take the firebox end off, uh, and see if we can, uh, you know make it look decent and then just set it and then, like i said static display is all it's going to be uh we're debating on where to put it i actually bought the neighbor's place here and uh it's going to be about another 20 days before everything's finished up and closed on it so i don't know whether we're going to put it there put it here and but either way i really need that land to be able to cut a road to the back of my property and that will free me up some space to get some some of the stuff from out front here and because I want to move a bunch of stuff around move a bunch of stuff out to make it you know look a little better I got stuff I can get rid of and then I've got stuff I can't get rid of you know there's cars here that I can't because it's we're in the process of paperwork and stuff and then I've got stuff that I don't want to get rid of and then I got a lot I've got I do need to get rid of but uh, you know some of it just needs junked and and the price of scraps down so much you know it's hard to make any money off that so, you know, we've tried to put off for a little while. But uh, anyway, I'm going to post a picture of that, of that boiler hanging uh, inside of, well, I guess it's sort of like inside of a block building. And the fire brick and all, I guess that was the part of the uh, boiler room. So I'm going to get my tape measure real quick, and I'm going to do the measurements on this. I still have not measured it. I walked it off and... You know, just assumed it's five foot by 16 and I think that's what it is but we're gonna check it real quick and go from there okay so we hit that one uh, nailed that one right on the head at five foot and 16 foot so that's without the firebox so this is damaged really bad this is quarter inch quarter inch steel so you can imagine what this is because it didn't hurt it at all. And I believe it's half inch. I think it's double the thickness from what from what I'm seeing, what I'm looking at. So this, the firebox end here is going to come off. I'm assuming that was where the chimney came up. And of course our door's broke. And I think we're going to leave this off completely for now. And I am going to advertise a wanted ad looking possibly for a door. Uh, there's always that chance that a boiler got ruined and that cast iron door was saved and if we can find the doors You know, we can build the the sheet metal part. Well, the it's not sheet metal I guess it's you know quarter inch, but we could build that some of this Looks like the flue was thinner than the quarter, but this is quarter through here It's quarter inch all the way around, but so we'll see what we can find but for now we'll get it off get all this everything cleaned up and then uh paint it uh, may get somebody to come sandblast it it uh, it may be way more feasible in the end but I got to figure out what I'm gonna do on these brackets I may just trim them off straight 
Uh, may leave them, I don't know. Maybe just bend them back down a little bit. I mean, it's all part of the story. It's not like we're going back to using it. That's the plan. Now, as to move this boiler around, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna move it around here. Okay, so I've got an axle here. I gotta get another wheel and tire back. Well, I gotta get two wheels and tires on. But uh, I've got an axle here that I have used over the years for hauling all kinds of different stuff. And actually what I've got is it's a one ton axle and it's cut off and the caps are, or the axles are cut off and the caps were put back on. And I used to bolt a frame to this and to move buildings. And I've also used this as a uh, dolly under a semi truck that the axle was out of. But uh, I got a hole there. I used to pump the oil in there to go to the bearings. Now it's probably got water in it, but no more than what we're gonna move it around here. But it's got a uh, heavy wall uh, tubing as a support also. Uh, got a cat on it. Think you gotta scan everything, Nina? Better jump off for it, boss. So, uh, so, what we'll do is we'll pick up one end of that boiler and sit it down on this, and then we'll run straps from here up to each side of it or over it and chain it down. I don't think it'll bend this, uh, our single axle tube, and then our square. I think it can handle the, handle the weight with no problem. So that's what we're going to do and then we'll pick up the other end with the wrecker and we'll be able to move it around i think i've got them tires will probably be okay i just need to put two more rims and tires back on this side so i think i'm running chevrolet on it i think i can't remember all right so anyway that's what we got that's what we're going to do to move it around uh, and like i said the wrecker will handle one end of it no problem okay so as for the engine uh, everything's going really good you know we found out the the sort of the special things about the engine one of them being the toggle gear for the cordless valves the other being the uh, the shutoff it actually has a, a special shutoff I didn't realize it. I had no clue but in 1910 there were 67 flywheel explosions uh, in the United States that killed people and maimed people and you know tore up a a lot of uh, companies and some of the flywheels was as small as automobiles and some of them was as big as you know 15 18 feet so it was a big problem and the problem you you know was mainly governor issues you know belts uh, somebody not being around when the belt come off uh, screws in the governors you know something like that so what it comes down to this engine had a special cutoff on it and which I guess is kind of an oddball so that makes the governor different so where a lot of steam engines you can use any governor you get a hold of you know if it's the right size uh, this sort of took a special setup so to go back original like we want to go because I don't want to change the original mechanism I want it to you know to be you know whether it's the only engine or not that's left with this style which, you know, as far as we can tell is, uh, we want it to be original. Luckily, we've got a, a somebody that's helping me out a whole lot, uh, and his name's Rich, on this engine. Rich is a engineer and a model builder, and has done a lot of it, and I'll go into more detail on him later. And uh, he has helped out a, a lot by giving me, he's sending me blueprints for this, for my engine, and the main blueprints that he sent me in the mail first was the governor blueprints. So I've officially have the governor blueprints so we can go through and if we have to completely build that governor for it to be back like it needs to be, we can do it. And uh, and I'm not saying I can do it all on my own, but I'm saying that between me and a couple friends I've got that, uh, you know, have a lot more experience in the, the reading blueprints and building from blueprints, uh, we can do it. And you know, one way or the other, it's going to get done. And if I don't die first, I mean, that's the whole deal. But uh, that's the plan. Uh, he's also sent blueprints for just about every part on the engine. He's He's been uh, uploading and, and sending them to me here recently. And I really appreciate it. Now, I'm forwarding all the limb blueprints directly to my printer. I've got a guy that does printing for us. He's been doing it for years for 
for our business and he has the large format printers and he can do the adjusting and getting them to where they look the best and he's going to print it out just like you would print it out if it was a real blueprint so instead of uh, sending them through the mail he's able to send them digitally and then we like i said i just forwarded them to him and then uh then i'll just stop by there and pick them up and pay him the price and i'll have them on paper but also i'll still have them here on on digital so uh, i'm sort of a paper person you know if i've i want to have it in front of me i don't want to have to go look on a computer to find the info uh, i can't even deal with a uh motors manual online you know I, i'd rather have the book in front of me so anyway i'm definitely posting a picture and if i haven't already of this boiler of that picture of it hanging you know that was sort of the eureka moment for me because i couldn't quite figure out what was going on why these were so long why did they even have these pads here because you didn't need to bring bring that foundation all the way up past the half point of the size because these are higher than half uh, so that told me basically what i was trying to figure out and so and sort of makes sense to me too because you know when you when you're heating and cooling something you have uh you have stuff moving you know stuff don't stay stationary and with that boiler sort of hanging you know you wouldn't have to worry about it moving on a foundation or cracking anything or doing anything like that so makes a lot of sense but uh we're not going to fire it so it really don't matter we are going to clean it up and we'll get it uh get it looking decent and maybe cap it off so nothing can get in it uh if then it might already be in it for all i know but uh you know it'll give it'll give young people an idea of what what the uh what it was like and you know the i'm sure there'll be questions and then uh you know maybe they'll learn something so my grandson's already seen it and he thinks we should make it into a train hopefully he won't really expect me to do that but all right appreciate everybody watching and until next time bye Okay, folks, as for the uh, Boiler Buster 2000, uh, no damage whatsoever. Uh, nothing broke. Uh, no cracks, no bends. So everything worked out good on it. Uh, you know, I just wasn't sure how the hell it was going to hold up, but I mean, we didn't put it under enough strain to, to test anything, I don't guess. Uh, the only thing we did break, besides that one bolt that I showed, was this strap now these straps are should be a straight pull of 8500 pounds or 8800 pounds 8800 pounds so we was probably putting more than 8800 pounds pull on this strap now this strap was i had one of them around the tree because i like to use straps around trees not chains uh less chance of tearing them up the tree up plus less chance of you know coming through the tree uh had one around it now this wasn't around it this was hooked to the strap and then this was hooked up uh, with another ring just like that one to the chain and that's where it broke it so uh you know didn't hurt anybody didn't even throw it anywhere where it really would have hurt anybody so uh besides that i don't we didn't break anything we broke no chains no cables no hooks uh like i said nothing on here uh didn't see any cracks no weld cracks and we was pretty rough on it but uh anyway just wanted to let everybody know what you know what we lost there one strap so straps were free a buddy of mine gave them to me so i don't i don't reckon i lost anything so we did get the pulley when i went back and i did get the rest of the door which is not much but it was there so uh, if nothing else, we can use that radius right there. That'd be a nice radius to be able to, to do our lower uh, foundation piece. So, and this is, looks like an idler. So if my guess, it was my guess, I'd say that this was probably, because there's no place for a keyway in that. I'd say it was an idler of some sort, maybe for the, uh, for the belt tensioner. 
and I would say it would be for the big belt because it's so wide because most machines don't run a well I don't know of any machines that run a belt that wide not when it comes to you know metal machines or wood machines stuff like that maybe they do but I don't remember seeing any but, okay anyway that's an update on the uh, the, the boiler buster or boiler remover 2000 I think I don't even remember what we called it but probably wouldn't hurt for a little paint on it but we'll see all right